My name is Monica. Uh, I'm a product manager on the Graph Connectors team, and with me today uh, I have Waldeck, um, who and we're going to talk a little bit about what Microsoft Graph Connectors are and how you might build your own custom uh, graph connector for Enterprise Search and Copilot. She got remuted again, by the way. Thanks. <laughs> oh my god. Um, just toggling between the meeting and the uh, PowerPoint. So, anyways, yep. Like I mentioned, um, I'll be talking a little bit about you know what graph connectors are, why they're important, how how they're useful, uh, and then I'll pass it off to Waldeck to show a demo of graph connectors in action. Uh, and he'll also walk through the components of a graph connector and how you might build one. Cool. So uh, organizations today are generating data at a faster rate than ever, and the pandemic has worsened this trend in the last couple of years. Uh, making matters worse, data are often created in silos, making them more difficult to discover and gain insights from. Uh, multiple analysts report uh, have estimated that information workers spend anywhere between 20 to 30 percent of their time just searching for information they need to do to do their jobs. Uh, additional productivity is lost because people need to duplicate work when they couldn't find the information they were looking for. Uh, modern information workers are often frustrated by this as they're increasingly expected to be able to find the right information quickly across their different applications. So with existing enterprise search solutions like Microsoft Search and the advent of AI chatbots like Microsoft 365 Chat, uh, otherwise known as Copilot, Employees across organizations can now inquire on, synthesize, and discover their native Microsoft content. Um, but what if I told you that they can also harness the power of search and AI to glean reach, rich insights from all their data across multiple applications and silos? With the power of Microsoft Graph Connectors, now they can. So, what exactly are Microsoft Graph Connectors? Uh, a graph connector comprises of a set of three simple graph API calls that allow you to index external third-party data into Microsoft Search Index. First, you create a connection by calling the external connections API. Uh, then you register your schema by calling the schema API. Uh, a schema is a flat list of properties mapped to metadata you want indexed. Uh, and lastly, you, you ingest your items by calling the external item API. Uh, once indexed, users can easily discover, summarize, and learn about that content by searching for it uh, in Microsoft Search. So this is an example of how, um, you know, graph connector content might show up in a search experience. Um, they can also see it recommended to them in office.com. Um, so as you can see here, this is an example of a box item showing up in the office.com recommended experience uh, under quick access. Um, uh, or asking for a summary on it in Microsoft's Copilot in Teams. So right now, this is the latest integration we're working on. Um, this is Graph Connectors is one of the few extensibility solutions for uh, developers to be able to um, have Copilot like reason over uh, external content. Cool. Uh, now I'm going to pass it over to Waldeck to sh show one in action and talk a little bit about how he built it. All right. So imagine the case, right? You have a meeting with a customer and you need to find a cool sample of what you can build on Microsoft 365. Now we've just learned, right, that we have nearly 1,700 samples available on the internet, but you need to know where they are and you need to go to this site and you need to find these things. Now, what if you could ingest all of that into your Microsoft 365 ten, ten, tenant where you already work and find it directly from there? So imagine that you can go here to Microsoft Search and you can say, hey, I need a sample on Teams AI. And there is a sample here about OpenAI embeddings and Redis search. OK, maybe I need something else. Maybe I need one about chat GPT. What are the cool things? Well, also there is a sample from Nico about chat GPT inside SPFX. How cool is that? 
right? And the cool thing is, you can find these things directly from your Microsoft 365 tenant, directly where 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 you work. You don't need to go anywhere else. And all of these, you can then then open up and see on the. Let me move this bar to the side because it's in my way, and I can't do anything else. Can I can I move it up? Can I move it? Where is it? Oh no, I can't move it. Okay, anyways. Right, so let me move this one down then. Okay, cool. So you can open a um, sample, you can view details from it, run it, but the most important part, you can easily find, find, find it here and share it with others uh, in your org. So how all of this works, and everything you will see now, everything you see now is available to you. You can run, and I would actually encourage you to run it. It is, again, a sample that we've got available for, for you in the gallery available for you to run. Just download it, press F5, and you will be able to experience all of that in your own environment. Anyways, how it works. You've just learned, right, that a connector has a few things, right? It has a connection, it has schema that kind of defines the data that you, that you want to store, and then finally the content that you import, right? So First things first, you create a connection. What is that? Well, it's a call to Microsoft Graph, and it's just one single call when you create a connection. And think of it as this is kind of the contract that you establish between your external store and Microsoft 365 that you will use to ingest the data into Microsoft 365. And you you need to include some info such as the ID, name, description, and additional few things if you want to, right? So again, single call, this is one of the three Microsoft Graph calls that you need to use. So one, create the connection. Two, you create schema. So with that, you say, what are the different things that I wanna keep track of, right? And these are things these things are important because they will allow you to find things back again that is just another call to graph and what, what do you pass here well if we go here you can see that for each sample that i track i want to know its title description the authors i want to have pictures beyond because i want to be able to see who built it i want to see joao's picture here or nico's right so i want to be able to see all of that so these are kind of the properties that we map Right, and then other things like image URL, icon URL, URL, because I want to be in the end able to visit the sample too, right? So basically, these are the data that I want to ingest, import to Microsoft 365, right? So that is call number two. We created a connection, and then we define the set of properties that we want to track for each sample that we import. Finally, the final step: we have all of that in place. Now it's actually time to import the data from our external store, whatever it is, to Microsoft 365. And that is basically the time for call to Microsoft graph number three. So basically the way it works is that we start with extracting the data from the source. It can be a database, it can be a file share, it can be local file, it can be basically any type of data you want to import to Microsoft 365, right? So that will be different for each connector that, that, that you build, because again, like you will be connecting to a data source. The number two is you will change the shape of the data that you extract to match the shape of schema that you defined on connections, right? So here on the extract, like again, that code you will write will be different Every single time, let me just remove my cat from my table because it's going to, to help me. Excuse me for of, of that. <laughs> right, so the code you write here is going to be different for every store you connect to, right? And out of that, you will basically get the data in the, right, the same shape you get them stored. Then the next step is to pass the data and actually change their shape to map them to schema we, we define, right? So here you will see exactly the uh, pro, pro, pro properties that we set, right? The title, description, authors, URLs, and all of that. So that is kind of where we change the shape from the source, right? To the, the data that we wanna show eventually in Microsoft 365. And then the final step is to actually push the data to Microsoft 365. So we do that in the load and here, Basically, the everything, the anything that we do is that, let me see, I collapsed all of that. I think it's here. Yeah, so in here, what we do is we iterate through all the items that we've got, and for each one, we do push item. And what does that do? Well, it calls the Microsoft Graph, 
right? So that is the call to Microsoft Graph number three, where we ingest, import the item that we extracted from external source and we push it to Microsoft Graph, right? So that is basically it. Three calls to Microsoft Graph, and you can bring in data from any external source you've got, whether it's a database, a file share, blob storage, table storage, whatever you've got to Microsoft 365 so that you can really easily find it inside already in the tenant where you work. But the cool thing is are also these other experiences where you can find out about new things that you didn't even know about based on the activities around them. So if, so, if somebody shares it, if somebody comments on it, if somebody even shares a link, all of that will allow you to find new and relevant things for your work. So with that, I would again encourage you to try the sample on your own environment. And the best way is again, see it in action, explore its code. It's not that hard. It's something that you can uh, run in minutes. And it's really, really cool to keep in mind as something that you might want to have. Because again, uh, at a point where when, when we all get AI available to us, we want it to reason over all of the content that we've got, not just only the files that we create in MySQL 365, right? We want it to be able to reason over everything that we know, we want it, it to know too, right? And that means also that we need to give it access to all of the data that we got stored in our, our org. And connectors are exactly the way to do that. So with that, I will, uh, give it back to Vesa to clo close down. And if there's anything, don't, don't hesitate to reach out to us.